Hey everyone, this is Alan Shumlewood live here at Open uh, Source Security Summit, Linux Foundation, Austin. We've been here all day for two days now, actually. We've been here two days. Hope you are enjoying the coverage. I mean, if you haven't quite got the gist yet, this next interview, I think, will drive it home. This open, this uh, OSS, Open S Source Summit, has become all about open source security, so supply chain, software supply chain security, SBOMs, and I can't think of a better person to, to discuss it with than the one and only Tracy Reagan. Thank Tracy, you. welcome. Thank is you, Alan. Is this the first time we're doing in person? No. We are, po this is our first post-COVID. COVID in, in yes, person. Yes, yes. So Tracy's been a staple during all these long months of COVID, you know, uh, zooming in from her place in New Mexico. Sometimes I feel like we're, we're keeping her from going out riding and doing whatever <laughs> she does out there in New Mexico. But it's so good to see you in person You again. as well. It really is. I'm Very so glad cool. to be here. So, you know, let me ask with this question, then what are you doing here? Well, I came here, so this is the Open um, Source Summit, so this is about everything open source, um, but I was uh, invited to speak on a panel at uh, Open Source Security Foundation uh, Day, mm -hmm. uh, which is the Open SSF. I know these all these open it can get con kind of confusing. Um, a lot of S's, then, too. And then I was invited to speak at the uh, Supply Chain uh, Security Con uh, tomorrow. So today's kind of my day off. I'm in the middle of between two, and I've been attending some sessions and learning a lot. I love it. So let, let's get some things straight, right? Because there are a lot of O's, a lot of S's, and a lot of F's here. <laughs> Yesterday, the Open Source Security Foundation, Foundation, OSSF, had their sort of conference within the bigger open source summit. We had had a kind of a community day, I would call it. Yes, that's a yes. good way of, I would call it, you know, a zero day conference, but that's bad in security. Yeah. And you are on the board of the OSS. I, I have been, I was, you know, I decided to throw my hat in the ring. Um, I'm a, a member rep. So, you know, I have a history of being a member rep for open source foundations. Uh, the first time I was a member rep was for the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, actually, IBM reached out to me when the Eclipse Foundation was first being started and asked if I would be the member rep. And then I was the member rep for the Continuous Delivery Foundation. Uh, and then we moved, when they started talking S-bombs, I'm like, oh, we're over on the other side now. We're right. going over to the Open SSF because that's, you know, kind of my thing. And I went ahead and threw my hat in the ring and I got elected to be another member rep. So, you know, members out there, I fight for you. Believe me, I'm constantly fighting for the members. And you're the no all kidding, you do a great job. You've done it at CDF, you've done it at every organization. But I got to ask a question. Were you like the class president in school no. or anything? No, I was not. Come on. You know, the, I, <laughs> no, I wasn't. I never really oh, I, do, I, I didn't want to do that. Uh -huh. But when I was probably about, I don't know, I must have been 12, I started a club. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. so I, I was into having a club. You always but Never into, in high school. Always I was, wanted to, were you like a sorority person? No, God, no. I was a competitive gymnast. I had a horse. I was taking music lessons, and my parents kept me so busy, I didn't have time to do any of that stuff at high really? school. Really? But here you are. I mean, if there's a, an organization, Tracy Reagan, you're always willing to help and, I, and you know, get involved. I, I love open source. And I believe in the community. And right now, I believe the real problem we have with solving these this difficult situation we find ourselves in with a ton of open source. I called it uh, yesterday in my panel. I, you know, I said, let's think about the open source and all of its connections and all its dependencies. It really is a massive... Um, it's like a Death Star. And it really is a Death Star. So we need community to come together to really talk about this. We are in, we are in such a flux right now between uh, open source security, which we know we have a problem with, and now cloud native and microservices and a changing CD pipeline, that there is, this is time for discussion. You know, I mean, facetiously, I, I said you were the first person to talk to us about this in the last few days. In fact, almost every person has. And, you know, and listen, and th that's how I learn, right? I, I, I'm kind of like an ant or a bee with an antennas, and I just take in all this information, and I try to synthesize it. And as I sit here, I, right, here's my new kind of reason for this. 
DevOps, because I'm all about DevOps, DevOps DevOps.com. DevOps has been so successful in fundamentally changing the way we build software, right? That we we've introduced this concept of software factories and pipelines, microservices is part of that. I mean, when when you think back to when my very first company that I started in the 90s, when we would have to build software for, uh, for a customer, you know, a project, we would take on project, you know, we were software developers. And I think about what it was like to build software for those customers versus how software is done today. It's night and day, right? We didn't, I, I didn't realize it back then. I thought, I was just young and stupid. Um, but we were building bespoke custom applications or software for every project we did. And every project we did, I mean, there was no VB or even Visual Basic or anything like that. Every project Every's was coded. Was coded by hand. Yeah, and you didn't use a lot of open source or shared libraries. Either. Oh, well, a lot of people wouldn't let you if they knew there was open source in there. Like, oh, no. You yeah, know. exactly. It violates our licensing and our insurance and our... This is all bullshit. But anyway, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but when, we, when I think back to those days... Versus the way software is built today, where I, I don't want to say it's Frankenstein, but you just you're pulling in stuff, stitching it. Well, it's about business agility mm -hmm. and speed, and being able to stand up new applications as fast as possible has, is the focus, yep. which is what started really pushing um, open source. Because you know, who wants to go if you already have beautiful graphs? You don't want to write them from co scratch. Just right. go find something out a library. And, and, that's but this is. It's accelerated. I think DevOps and the whole Agile and you know these kinds of things have accelerated that. But it's also introduced the concept of supply chain security. Yes. Who, who wrote it? Is it secure? Is, should I trust it? So we have so many options now. We have so much open source out there that we can borrow from. N now we're realizing that we really do need to, and I, I hate using this analogy, but it's appropriate. Um, we need to be able to list our ingredients. Yep. And it, it comes, to, you know, I've, I've been talking to a few of the government uh, folks because in that supply chain discussion, you know, I, when I think about it, it's like, what's the first thing we have to solve? To me, the first thing we have to solve if the house is on fire, response. We need to have a good way to ha create a response. If there is something like another log for Jay, I don't want to hear about it because a new CVE came up or I saw it on Twitter. I want to know in a better way. Um, and that, you know, that's kind of my dream is that someday yeah. we will have a, you know, that's what we're working with on Artilius, a unified place so that you go and register. If you're, you're, you've written something open source, you go and register, you register who you are so that we can be begin that trust story. And you can begin tracking the SBOM of that object that may be consuming other Third open part. source right. pro components, which it's going to do. Which is why we have this crazy dependency map, and it's very difficult to sort out that you traverse down, a, it's a rabbit hole you get to when you see all the different um, open source tools that you're using, and then that one way down there may have been using Log4j, which then it can expose you all the way up the, up the chain. So it's a, good it's a really good discussion for us to start having, but to be quite honest, we are starting to break that, even though we're just now having this in a monolithic world. Microservices does change that a little bit. Absolutely. So we well, it doesn't maybe change it. I think it complicates it, it because now it, like you said, oh well, it might have log4j way down here, a third party, third party, third party. Well, with microservices, and you have dozens of microservices, each one of them, and so on, and so on, and so on, right? The the problem becomes infinitely harder to solve. You almost look at it and say, well, geez, if I was just dealing with one thing monolithic right here. Well, if you just deal with one component right here and break it down, if we can get it broke down to individual components, that, you know, it's like going into Home Depot. You've, there's, a, there's a giant I, store I of you. parts and pieces. And you but go you and you find you exactly the, elephant, the part you right? want. 
one bite at a time. And so that's yes. what you got to... That's what you have Because otherwise it'll scare the crap out of you. I mean, you just it, run away and say, let me find a different... To me, I think everybody should be thinking of components. We have a... I want to call it a component-driven architecture because mm -hmm. that's what we're moving into. And components are consuming other components. But we have to start breaking those components apart. And over time, this is not going to happen soon, but over time, we have to start decoupling this. Because one... What, it, it may be the case that you didn't really need that library in there. It was just stuck in there because somebody thought it needed to be there. And then you have a vulnerability for no apparent reason. And that does happen. There are, there are dependencies that are unnecessary. And this, as soon as we start figuring out a way to centralize the data and be able to slowly break apart some of those components and de decouple it, um, especially if we do that for like the top 200 open source projects, right? Open source mm -hmm. libraries, then we'll start making progress. I, but we, I, so. I feel like we ha we have to we have to take that on, and we have to. Be well, we absolutely have. We to have to be accountable for it. So, to me, there's two things here. Number one, and I'm I'm actually looking forward to talking to our friends from JFrog about this. Is I really think when so many of these components make their way into our software from being downloaded from repositories, there's got to be some responsibility, or not some, there's got to be an advantage to repo owners who are more responsible about what gets downloaded from their repo, right? Yes, but it's hard. It's a if hard it was place easy, to gate everyone it. would do it. It's a hard it. place to gate yeah, it. But We've got to put, there's got to be choke points in on this. <laughs> yes. Well, developers right? don't do well when they're being choked. Or, okay. <laughs> I'm not choking them. But, you know, there's got to be gates, places where we can gate stuff and where we can regulate this we stuff. You know, I, I, I hesitate to agree with you because we fought so hard to break the gates down so we can move faster. Because, again, we get back to this is a business agility discussion. Is I, I feel it's more... But it's more like kills. accessibility and visibility and information and appropriately using the tools we have. There's so much DevOps intelli intelligence underneath the DevOps pipeline. this cries out for you. automation. It, here, exactly. here, here's the deal. Uh, and reporting. Let's take something old. Let's take Struts 2 from Equifax, yeah. right? The Equifax culprit. Yeah. I believe, wasn't that in the Sona type repository, Nessus? The, the problem with Equifax was they knew they had a problem, but they had too many gates to get it to production. Yeah, and that, that is an issue. So but, yeah, then we worked about the breaking problem. down the gates so we could Six get... Six to eight things. months after Equifax, people are still downloading and using that old version of Struts. Why? Why, why is it even on the repo? Shouldn't there be... Like, you know when you're using your browser and you go to a site that might be unsafe? My wife will call me with this all the time. I got a message, I'm going to an unsafe site, but I need to get to the site. My first thing is usually, did you type the address right? But that being said, why can't we... <laughs> <laughs> I digress. Why can't we build... Why can't we build... A warning I like that? I believe that we should do that. I totally do. And, I you mean, know, that seems a no-brainer-ish to me. Yeah, and you have to you have to think of it as hi historical too. Yeah, because you have to know what versions of that. Hey, and that is Tracy, what we our don't records know. indicate you downloaded of uh, uh, this component, which has now been de de uh, whatever the word is degenerated. deprecated. Deprecated. That was the word. <laughs> um, so and, don't and you, you don't do that? It might hurt. I right. know. I know. Why can't we, you know? Because there may be a dependency on that that somebody needs to I, use. I get it, but at least I made you aware of yes. it, and now you manage that risk. I know. I, I, I agree completely. There, okay. should be, there should be accessibility. Did you hear this? She agrees <laughs> I told, completely. Because that's what we're trying to do with Ortelius, a central place for you to go well, and you so that you can see for every version all on. the vulnerabilities so I can make that decision if I want to use that. In the same way as we now make a decision if you want to put a mask on when you get on a plane. Right. It's exactly. the same thing. You have to be able to make that decision. The problem is there's not a central place to get that information. And it's not historical. It's not often built based on version. So you can't see the vulnerability. You can't see the level of the vulnerability. It's, it's, you can find it if you work hard at it, but it's not just... Well, the whole version. level of vulnerability thing is, I think, also... 
Look, I was there with MITRE, my friend Bob uh, Martin from MITRE at RSA one year announced the whole CVE uh, thing and, and rating of vulnerabilities. What a great idea it was back then. But what I've come to understand in the years since then, and that was 15, 20 years ago, what I've come to understand since then is just because it's a critical vulnerability to me, it may not be a critical vulnerability to you. For, you may have done things that kind of deflect the, the, the I might not severity. be using it in something that has a high risk value. Right? Or it may not be accessible to the outside world. Yeah. It may be this. There's a lot of reasons. So it's very hard to say something is a high critical to everyone. It, it, I think it depends. I think, and that, you know, so I'm, so I'm not a complete socialist, right? I, not, not, I, quite. I, not quite. I, I think individuals or individual organizations should have the ability to determine for themselves. But they have to have the data to do it. Right. And this is the problem. And that's, that's the, the issue. data is the problem. It's out there, but it's hard to find. If you don't have something already automated, you're asking your de developers to look for those vulnerabilities before they release it. And they've got other things that they've got to do. So we need it... We need it served easy to us. We're, we're becoming very lazy when it comes to, to digging that kind of stuff up. Yes. I mean, you know, if, I, if I'm on my phone and I go to download an app and it gives me any hassle, I just go find go another app. app. I, right? I like, agree with you. So we have, to make it, we, have to serve, we have to serve the data up in a way that is in their face and is easy to get to. And that's, that's, the, that's the challenge. And that starts with SBOMs because you have to have the SBOM before you can find the vulnerability, right? You have to know what's in your package and to know what vulnerabilities to look for. Uh, and that's even a challenge for some teams because if, you're right, if you've written a manual kind of make process or build process or scripted process, whatever, however you're building your packages, um, you need to include all of that scanning and, you know, call something like SIFT or Cyclone to create that d information. And if somebody's not telling you to do it, it's pro you're probably not going to because you've got other things to do. You're a developer, you have we your all hands have, full. We, right, we have, uh, there's not enough hours in the day. So the automation is critical and it would be great to have some kind of, a again, my complaint continues to be if, if the if we have a fire in New Mexico, we have an incident response system that starts to handle it from the very beginning. You have somebody who is in charge of that. Right now, if we have a fire in software, we don't have a central incident response. It's more like Florida. <laughs> and you said it, not me. I live there. Oh, don't so even So we go need there. to work on that. And that's, again, being getting the data, having the data accessible and easy to access. Absolutely. Tracy Reagan, it is a pleasure to see you in it's person. It's a pleasure. I, I always love doing these chats. I know you do, but it's just nice to be in person with you and not have you up on my monitor in the studio there. And we didn't, we didn't talk about continuous delivery. No, we did it. And you, you know, know what? I was surprised I haven't seen more CDF presence. Well, I, I wore my T-shirt. I, I do see you have that. That was yes. two weeks ago. Yes, I was it here. was. And you know, the, the, uh, in the CD world... Um, things that you should be asking people as you're doing these interviews, you start asking them about CD events. Because events are going to change the way our CD pipeline Not, not CD conferences, events within Event. that CD Correct. pipeline. It, correct. Okay. Because think about this. Think about you want to add SBOM and vulnerability scans to your pipeline. Mm -hmm. And you have 2,000 workflows that you have to update. Are you really going to do it? No. No, you're not going to. But if, as we evolve through this, we have to d work on the automation and the event, CD events, having a single listener where everybody in integrates in a similar way, and there's a payload that you p pass across based on an event, like cloud events, that's going to prevent people from having to write these very imperative pipelines, and it'll get us there faster. CD events, you heard about it here first from our friend Tracy. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be back. I think we've got some folks from IBM, some folks from JFrog. Still got plenty more to do today here in Austin. We'll be right back.